I'm Atubo Judge, and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Now, today is another day. Are you ready to receive today's benefits? Are you ready to receive your daily bread today? Now, join me and let's, let's make our demand. Praise God. Say, Father, I receive today my daily bread. It's coming to me now, and it's coming to me freely. In Jesus' name, amen. And that's it. Receive it in the name of the Lord Jesus. Let's go into today's broadcast. Father, we bless you today. Your word is producing fruit in us. And we yield ourselves completely. And by this fruit, healings are taking place in our bodies right now. Provisions are coming to us, Lord. In Jesus mighty name we pray. Amen. Praise God. Now we've been talking about the things concerning salvation, the things concerning our salvation. And then we were looking at what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 7 and verse 21 that not everyone who calls him Lord will enter into the kingdom of heaven. Now this is it. You will enter into the kingdom of heaven simply because you look like heaven. Not because of what you have done. Not because of how many souls you have won. No, those things do not qualify you to get to heaven. What qualifies you to get to heaven is that you look exactly like him. And that's what I was sharing with you yesterday. If you do the work at the expense of your own soul, then you lose at the end. And this is the reason Paul says, I keep my body under so that i don't be a preacher winning everybody and then at the end of the day i myself will be a castaway because it is very very possible praise god it's possible to win so many souls it's possible to preach to a lot of people and then at the end of the day i mean do miracles and all that and at the end of the day you become a castaway so you must always monitor yourself. You must always monitor your heart. Hey, why am I doing the things I'm doing? You, you remember David. Some things about David I want us to look, look, look at. You know, God said concerning David that, look, David is a man that is after my heart. That's what God said concerning David. Now, what did God mean by a man after my heart? Simple. David was someone who wanted to just be like me. That's what David meant. That's what God meant by that statement. He's not someone who's running. God said, ah, I love him so much. No, God says he is a man after my heart. Meaning he's a man who's always concerned to know what is in my heart. Now, this is the reason you see David's life. Every step David wants to take, he finds out what the mind of God is concerning it. So you find him, Lord, should I go? Should I not go? You tell me. And God says, go. Okay. God says, wait. He will wait. Every step David took. Now, that was why God loved David so much. You know why? Because David was concerned about bearing fruit. Now, this is why God made this statement concerning David. Uh, First Kings chapter 15. I want to show you something. 1 Kings chapter 15. From verse 4. It says, Nevertheless, for David's sake, did the Lord his God give him a lamp in Jerusalem to set up his son after him, and to establish him. Now he was talking about a king. Now look at verse 5. He says, Because David did that which was right in the eyes of the Lord 
and turned not aside from anything that the Lord commanded him all the days of his life. What a testimony. What a testimony. Now, listen, when you think of things like this, and then you begin to like, a man lived his life, and all the days of his life, he did not turn away from all the things God commanded him to do. Now that's, that's, that's what having the right spirit or allowing the Holy Spirit to bear fruit in you, that's what it does. Now, I'll give you an example. David sat down one day and he thought to himself, look, I have a covenant with Jonathan that I will do him good and his children good. So he now asks the question, he says, hey, is there anyone left of the house of Saul? I want to show that person kindness for Jonathan's sake because I have a covenant with Jonathan. And they now said, yeah. Jonathan actually has a son, Mephibosheth. And then they said, he is lame. He's a lame man. And the Bible lets us know that David, for some reason, for some funny reason, hated lame and blind people. It is written in scriptures. He hated the lame and the blind. Because one time David was about to attack a city. And then the people said, ah, he wants to come here. Yes, they went to line up the lame and the blind. And they put them in front. Because they knew that David hated them. So they, they, they were using that strategy to turn David away. Because the Bible actually says that they were hated of David's soul. He hated him. For what reason? I don't know. But now, God says, David, I want you to remember your covenant with Jonathan. Say, yeah. Oh, Lord, I'm now king. I've got to remember to do them good. And he asked that question. And then he said, the only person that is surviving He's a lame man. And David said, get him for me. And they got him. He says, hey, you from today are going to sit on my table with me at meal. Wow. What happened to his hatred? He pushed it aside that he would do the will of God. And that's what the Holy Spirit can do in a man. Now, another example I'll give concerning David. Why, why God said, this guy is after my heart. Saul was after David's life. And Saul was the king. So David fled from him. And on two occasions... David was given a clear opportunity to eliminate Saul. Now, this is not just a coup. This is not just planning a coup. This is not just taking advantage. This is, look, as he, this man is lying down there. The reason he is here right now is because he came to look for your life. And now here he is lying down. And you are here wondering whether you should take action or not. If this man wakes up, you will be dead. And someone said to David, the opportunity has come. What God said concerning you is fulfilled. Take the spare. Trust this man. He dies. All this running. It was because of Saul. David couldn't live a comfortable life in the city. He was running from this town to the next town, living in the, in the hills and in, 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 in caves and in bushes. Think about it. 
Now, here's an opportunity. Why didn't David interpret it to mean God is saving his life? God is giving him the victory. The hunter has become the hunted. You understand what I'm saying? God put the hands of Saul in David's, the life of Saul in David's hands. And David analyzed the whole situation and said, I will do it. Why? Because is the Lord's anointed. I'm not going to use my own hand to revenge. I'm not going to use my own hand to get myself this kind of thing. God said he will make me, make me king. Then whenever he's ready, he's going to make me king. I won't use my own hand to make myself king. And he turned away from it. And you know, anytime I think of that scripture, you know what comes to my mind? I just tell myself that when that thing happened, even God went, what? And God looked at the whole situation and said, no, let's try this scene again. <laughs> it's God, yeah, Let, let's, let's replay this scene again. Because I want to be sure that that's what is in David's heart. Not just that that day, he just didn't feel like killing him. <laughs> let's be sure. So the same thing happened again for the second time. God put the life of Saul in David's head. And David did the same thing. He said, I won't do it and God said wow what a man now think about it you know you know a few days ago the Lord was talking to me about our nation because we've been praying for our nation and the Lord asked me a question he said if I put you and tell you now okay you decide what should happen you know as your nation is right now you decide because we we all have this thought in our mind that ah look the president is not doing what he's supposed to do the president is not and so the lord said if i put if i give you the opportunity i say okay no i'm putting the president in your power that take a decision what would you decide now now i've learned that when the lord asks you a question that you just know what the answer is that's when you should be the most careful and then I said, Lord, thou knowest. <laughs> Praise God. That was my reason. I said, Lord, sincerely, I don't want to answer. I think I will only do what you would have me do. And the Lord said to me, would you have mercy? Now, this is why I remember the scripture. And the Lord said, would you have mercy like David did? And I thought to myself, I said, yeah, because, you see, it's not, I, I want you to understand. And this is where our life get tested. This is how our lives get tested and tested for very important things that the Lord wants to do with your life. A test like this is thrown at you. What would you do? Why did David refrain from from killing Saul. Now today it may not be you using a gun to kill somebody, but you can kill with your mouth. Because Jesus said, if you hate, you have committed murder. So you, you watch your life and then you say, Wow, what do I do in a situation like this? Your enemy comes to your house and he's hungry. Now, this is a sworn enemy. When I mean sworn enemy, he had told himself that, look, if he has the opportunity, he will kill you. He has told it to your face. And now he's in a disadvantaged position. And he comes to your house. He says, look, I'm hungry. What will be your response? Eh... Hey, God, I've shamed you. Hey, you wanted to kill me. If you had killed me, who will now give you food? Get out of my house. Now, you think... Now, if, if you put this kind of question to a hundred people, you are sure to know what the greater majority is going to say. Kill the stupid guy. But that is the time the Lord begins to look for fruits in your life. What's he looking for? 
is this guy like me? That's what he's looking for. Is he like me? Now, at that time, if you don't produce fruit, or if you don't show that the fruit of God is in you, I'll tell you what's going to happen to you. God will take you off as one of the people who are not qualified to enter the next phase of his grace, of his anointing, or whatever he's doing. He will take you off. This is how we are tested without us knowing. David was tested. And he passed the test. Why? Because he kept himself under the influence of God's spirit, even in his decision making. Praise God. Our time is up right now. I, I hope you are enjoying this. I I'm taking my time to share this truth with you because it's very, very important. Because of what God wants to start doing in your life. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.